Okay, so this video is for Caleb and for Buck Your Imagination. Let's go. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm doing something super exciting. I'm going to talk to you about my collection of Goosebumps books. Let me show you. Oh god. Oh my god. Oh, they've fallen. Alright, now I need to flip them around. No, this ain't going to work, mate. This ain't going to work. Oh, they hit me in the face. Okay, there might be too many for me to hold up. Here we go. Here we go. We've got a plan. <laughs> so I'm going to talk to you about these. <laughs> okay, let me put them down. Okay, well I was going to go through these in alphabetical order because that's how they live on my bookshelves. But as you may have just noticed, they just went everywhere. So I'm just going to pick them out at random, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I will. No, I'm going to re-alphabetize them. I've split it into two piles. So this is the first pile. Half of these I only got recently. Um... So I had a, a housemate who moved out and left behind about 30 Goosebumps books. So um, I was like, right, I'm going to keep those. I'm going to read them. And so I did. So some of these I literally read when I was like 26, 27. And some of them I first read when I was about 10. So, so we've got A Night in Terror Tower. This is set in the Tower of London. Well, it's kind of the Tower of London. It's the, it's the famous Terror Tower in London. And it's like a little bit of a time travel -y thing. And there's a man in a black cape that's chasing them. And obviously there is a twist at the end as well. I quite like this one. I have fond memories. Then we have A Shocker on a Shock Street. So Erin and her friend Marty just love horror films, especially those scary Shock Street films. That's right, so they go on a studio tour. Don't really remember this one, to be honest. This is one of the more recent ones that I read, at least. These are all pretty old, so none of them are particularly recent. But they're recent reads for me. We have Are You Terrified Yet? which is Goosebumps 2000, which is presumably, uh, well, it says 2000 times the scares. Welcome to the new millennium of fear. It's to do with uh, dares. It's only a game. It's only a dare. It's only torture. Yeah, I don't remember this one much either. Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns. This is obviously a Halloween themed one. Uh, it only means one thing for Drew and Walker. So they plan to use these pumpkin heads to scare their friends and then it all goes wrong. Attack of the Mutant. Now this is my favourite Goosebumps book. I used to have nightmares about the Masked Mutant in this book. And basically it's about these kids that go and... They discover that the uh, secret base of this villain in their favourite comic book series is actually a real place. And so they go and investigate. Be careful what you wish for. So this is about somebody who gets given three wishes but... Obviously, in any Three Wishes tale, it doesn't always turn out well for them. And uh, I'm going to leave it at that. This is kind of one of the more classic ones. I remember the uh, TV show episode of, of this Goosebumps book. Then there is Beware the Snowman, which has an amazing looking angry snowman on the front. This is set in Sherpia, a cold, cold place, a tiny village on the edge of the Arctic Circle. And there are uh, hideous scar-faced snowmen in front of people's houses. I do remember this one, actually. This is a more of a recent read. One of the ones that I was given by my housemate. But, uh, yeah, I enjoyed this one. Beware of the Purple Peanut Butter. So this is a Give Yourself Goosebumps book, which means you make the decisions in it. And, you know, you turn to the relevant page. Again, this is one of the more recent ones that I read. It's got over 20 scary endings in it. And, uh, yeah, do you eat the purple gooey mixture or the chocolate cake? And then I believe you get shrunk. It's a bit like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Then we have Calling All Creeps. This one was cool, actually. I like the concept here. Uh, somebody puts an advert in the paper saying, uh, it says, if you're a real creep, call Tasha after midnight. And then the person who placed the ad starts getting calls from these people who call themselves creeps. Ooh. Creature Teacher. You can probably guess what this is about. It says, she's not going to give you bad marks. She's not going to give you detention. She's going to eat you. This is another Give Yourself Goosebumps. This is Deep in the Jungle of Doom. And the tagline for these Give Yourself ones, by the way, Reader Beware, you choose the scare, as opposed to the normal one, which is obviously Reader Beware, you're in for a scare. These are two, really. These are Deep Trouble and Deep Trouble 2. And uh, it's about Billy Deep and his sister Sheena and their mysterious uncle and the adventures they have on the waves. And uh, yeah, it will put you off seafood. Although I'm vegetarian, so you know. And we have Don't Go to Sleep. I genuinely can't remember this one. Matt goes into his guest room and when everyone else is asleep and he really shouldn't have done that apparently. 
So next up we have Escape from the Carnival of Horrors. This is another one of the Give Yourself Goosebumps books. And this is one that I did have as a kid. And basically you're in a carnival of horrors and you have to get out. And again, there are over 20 scary endings. What the hell is this? Oh, there's a little flyer inside for the Goosebumps Club. Am I too old to join the Goosebumps Club? I don't know. Then we have R.L. Stein's Ghosts of Fear Street. Uh, the creepy collection number three, The Scream Team. So this has got Hide and Shriek, Spell of the Screaming Jokers, and Field of Screams. So this is three in one. Uh, yeah, so these are all set on Fear Street, I guess. I think I might have another Fear Street one knocking around somewhere. We'll see. And uh, yeah, three books in one. Can't complain. Don't remember it at all, really. Field of Screams, I remember, actually. That was about some kid playing baseball. It was very Stephen King-esque, as are uh, most of the Goosebumps books, to be fair. Then we have I Am Your Evil Twin. This is another Goosebumps 2000s one. The cat is here. And, uh, yeah, it's about an evil twin. And... Okay, so then we have I Live In Your Basement. And the blurb for that is whatever Marco does, he hears the same thing. Don't do that. It's dangerous. Sometimes he thinks his mum doesn't want him to do anything. Ever. Okay, then we've got Goosebumps 2000, a two-in-one edition. This is Invasion of the Body Squeezers, parts one and two. For the first time in one book, the full story of the Invasion of the Body Squeezers. Okay, then we have the Slimy Special, which presumably once came with some slime, because there's this like plastic thing here, I don't know. And this has got Monster Blood 1, 2, and 3 in. All three Monster Blood titles in one slimy book. And then we have Monster Blood 4 as well, so I guess they released a fourth one. But um, these ones are quite fun because the Monster Blood is kind of unpredictable. It is this kind of putty-like substance, except it starts to like mutate and grow and grow and grow and they don't know how to get rid of it. And it gets very sinister. So uh, yeah, these ones were fun. All right, Goosebumps, more tales to give you Goosebumps, 10 spooky stories. And I've got to be honest. This is the only one that I've ever heard of, I think, that is short stories. It's ten short stories. And uh, I think it's worth grabbing for that reason if you're a Goosebumps fan. Then we have My Best Friend is Invisible. I mean, yeah, pretty self-explanatory what this is about from the title. Except I believe nobody believes him as well. So Sammy gets in trouble because uh, people keep thinking he's doing stuff and it's not. It's his invisible best friend. There's no justice, man. No justice. Piano Lessons Can Be Murder. This is a five-star Goosebumps book. I mean, it's no, you know, To Kill a Mockingbird, but it is a good little Goosebumps book. This is one that I used to love as a kid. I think this is even my old copy of it. And yeah, it's about this kid who goes to get piano lessons, and his piano teacher is this creepy guy with the weird metal hands. And we have Revenge R Us from Goosebumps Series 2000. And uh, this is about a company, I believe, that will take revenge for you. And so this kid basically, he wants to get revenge on some other kid for some stupid reason. And so he engages Revenge R Us. And then he changes his mind and they won't. And they won't stop. Oh. Then we have another couple of five-star Goosebumps books here. We have Say Cheese and Die and Say Cheese and Die Again. And this is about Greg and his friends and they find this haunted camera. And basically when they take photos on this camera, it shows these horrible, awful things happening. And uh, the problem is, is that those things eventually start coming true. And these two books tell the story of what happens with that. Then we have The Barking Ghost. This is about a dog that's a ghost. It's basically Cujo for kids. And uh, yeah. That's all I need to say about that one, I think. I don't really remember it. We have The Blob That Ate Everyone. These titles are great. I mentioned in my Five Bookish Facts video that R.L. Stein starts with his titles and then creates a story that fits the title. And yeah, this is about a blob that ate everyone. Hmm, yeah. Then we have The Curse of Camp Cold Lake, which is about this weird white walker thing in a lake. Oh yeah, someone pretends to drown, that's it. But she'd better be careful because the lake may be cold, but she could be getting herself into really hot water. Then we have The Curse of the Creeping Coffin, another Give Yourself Goosebumps book. And I don't remember this one at all, but it's about going to visit your grandma, whose house backs onto a graveyard. Oh yeah, that would make sense. And there is a creeping coffin, I guess. We have The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb. Now I like this one purely because I like Egypt stuff. Me and my mum both have a bit of a thing for ancient Egypt. We like documentaries on it and that kind of stuff. So, uh, and this one is obviously set with somebody who goes to Egypt and uh, 
enters the mummy's tomb. Then we have The Deadly Experiments of Dr. Eek, and this is another Give Yourself Goosebumps book. Top secret and dangerous, that's what your mum, a scientist, calls the research she's doing at Dr. Eek's laboratories. So you can imagine how pear-shaped things go when you find yourself in the laboratory giving yourself goosebumps. Then we have The Ghost Next Door, and I guess this is another five-star one for me. It's another one I read when I was relatively young. Probably later than some of the other books on this list, but um, there's a twist in it, and the twist always stuck with me. Even though as an adult reader, I think it's a kind of obvious twist. Um, I remember at the time, as a little kid, it blew my mind. Then we have The Girl Who Cried Monster. This is another five-star one. This is about a girl whose uh, librarian, Mr. Mont Mortman, is a monster. And she tells people, and nobody believes her, because she's always telling monster stories. It's like The Girl Who Cried Wolf, basically, but with monsters in a library. Then we have The Haunted Mask. This is another one I have fond memories of. Basically, it's Halloween. Somebody puts on this really scary-looking haunted mask, and then uh, they can't take it off. The haunted mask is stuck on them forever. Ooh. Then we have The Headless Ghost. Can't remember it, but apparently it's about a haunted house that was haunted with the ghost of a 13-year-old boy with no head. Then we have TikTok You're Dead, another Give Yourself Goosebumps book. And I do have fond memories of this one. This is another one that I used to have. And, uh... Da, 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 yeah, it's a time traveling thing. That's it. A, time, a strange scientist in his time machine. So the choice is yours. Where will you go? Then we have another Give Yourself Goosebumps one. This is Trapped in Batwing Call. You're the, it's no fun being the new kid at school. You don't even have one friend. But then you meet Nick and he asks you to join his club, the Horror Club. And they meet in Batwing Hall. And I seem to remember it's kind of like a weird initiation kind of thing. They're trying to scare the crap out of him. And uh, you have to choose what, what he does. Then we have Under the Magician's Spell, another Give Yourself Goosebumps book. This is set in a new magic shop. Unfortunately, your little sister's found it. She's run out of the shop with a book of spells. And the magician, the evil magician, wants his book back. Oh, then we have Vampire Breath. Uh, oh yeah, I remember this one. So they go down into a secret passage in somebody's basement. And they find an empty coffin and a bottle of Vampire Breath. And then, because they're idiots, they uncork the bottle of vampire breath and the vampire comes back. Then we have Welcome to Camp Nightmare. This is another one I remember as a kid. I probably wouldn't give it five stars just because it's set in an American holiday camp thing, which we don't really have here in the UK. But it's, uh, it's, it's the little camp of horrors. I think this is one of the first Goosebumps books, actually. Then we have Welcome to Dead House. Amanda and Josh aren't too sure about the old house they've just moved into. It's spooky and probably haunted. And their new neighbourhood, Dark Falls, is pretty creepy too. Yeah, you're in for a scare. And finally, last but not least, we have Werewolf Skin. And this is about uh, when Alex visits his aunt and uncle in Wolf Creek. Because he wants to get some tips from his uh, professional photographers, you see. He wants to get in phot for, into photography, into photography. So there we have it. That's my collection of Goosebumps books. There are quite a lot of them, as you can tell. I've just kind of collected them throughout the years. I haven't really gone out of my way to, to buy them or anything. I've just ended up with them. One weird thing, I went onto my Goodreads the other day and it turns out that R.L. Stein is my second most read author behind Terry Pratchett. So yeah, I've read a lot of Goosebumps apparently. So be sure to let me know with a comment if you've read any of these and if so, which one was your favourite. Hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and I'll see you soon for another one. Thanks a lot. Bye.